Scientists in Singapore have used cheaper DNA analysis techniques to show that smuggled pangolin scales from massive seizures here in 2019 were probably from previously untouched parts of Western and Western Central Africa. The National Parks Board NPARCS announced on Monday that the new protocol by its Centre for Wildlife Forensics makes it possible to zero in on animal poachers in Africa who have slipped under the international authorities' radar for years. In another boost for the war against wildlife crime, a new global youth network, to be led by Singaporeans, was launched on Monday. At the annual Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora sites meeting in Geneva, Switzerland, Singapore's proposal to kickstart the site's global youth network on sustainable wildlife trade was supported by parties to the convention, announced National Development Minister Desmond Lee in a Facebook post on Monday. In 2019, the Singapore authorities fought major smuggling attempts when it uncovered nearly 40 tons of pangolin scales, the biggest haul in the country to date. There are eight species of pangolins around the world. And they are the most trafficked mammals on the planet. Pangolin scales are prized as medicine, but their medicinal value has not been scientifically proven. Over a two-year study, scientists here conducted rapid DNA extraction for a record 2,346 pangolin scales taken from the 2019 massive seizures. The scales were traced to the endangered white-bellied and giant pangolins as well as the vulnerable black-bellied pangolins. These selected scales, while dried up, had enough dried skin or tissue to analyze. The researchers used chemicals that were commonly found in labs and could extract DNA faster. They later used a next-generation sequencing tool to sequence the genes of thousands of scales at a time, compared with fewer than 100 at a time previously. New genetic signatures were traced back to Western and Western Central Africa, suggesting a potential resurgence of poaching and newly exploited populations in these regions, said NPARCS on Monday. Mr. Ryan Lee, NPARCS Group Director of Wildlife Management, said it is important for law enforcement officers to identify the species and trace the geographical origins of these pangolins. The international community will be in a better position to tackle poaching hotspots and curb illegal wildlife trade at the source. It is often expensive, logistically challenging and time-consuming for the authorities abroad to map the genes of large seizures, he noted. The Centre for Wildlife Forensics used the new and efficient process to meet this need and help scientists overseas emulate this technique. The new process has reduced the cost of sequencing each DNA fragment from one pangolin scale to less than a dollar, as compared with $10 to $12 using conventional methods. Mr. Ryan Lee added. The data generated by the scientists has been uploaded to a United States-based public database of DNA sequences. While Singapore is not a key destination or source of the illegal animal trade, the Republic has one of the busiest ports in the world where exotic pets and animal parts have been seized. A recent report in the Straits Times revealed that non-native geckos, snakes and sugar gliders were peddled on messaging app Telegram, among other online trading platforms. Singapore is also a party to sites, an international agreement that ensures wildlife species are not threatened with extinction by trade. Young people joining the newly launched sites network will learn about the complexities behind sustainable wildlife trade, sites-related matters and biodiversity conservation. In 2024, young representatives from around the world will gather in Singapore for leadership training and further cement the network's structure and activities. They will also organize the first Global Youth Summit. Happening the following year. The selection criteria for young people to join the network will be laid out by Singapore and the site's secretariat in the coming months. 
NPARCs will support the network. Mr. Ryan Lee said the members of the youth network can apply what they have learned to implement solutions back in their hometowns to combat wildlife crime. One solution could be behavioral change campaigns to prevent poaching or reduce the demand for elephant ivory and exotic pets. University undergraduate Ting Y. Kit, 26, a co-founder of the new network, said, Active youth can influence policy by bringing attention to issues, engaging with lawmakers, and participating in platforms like sites that will potentially shape future legal frameworks to protect endangered species. Noting that youth engagement in wildlife trade is still lacking today, the final year geography student from the National University of Singapore hopes that the new network can work with existing international youth chapters, including one under the United Nations Climate Change Body. As an NPARC's youth steward, Mr. Ting helped to organize a youth symposium in 2022 involving 18 countries to mark World Wildlife Day. At a sites conference in Panama that year, he also supported stronger international protection against trade for two songbirds that are native to Singapore, the straw-headed bulbul and the white rump shawmah.